help desk software, payment software, email marketing tools, CMS and blogging tools, SEO tools, deal management tracking, pipeline tracking. You don't need more tools to get more out of your business. You just need HubSpot. Their all-on-one customer platform is a dream come true for every member of your team. With best-in-class campaigns and workflows to generate more leads for marketing, category-leading pipeline management to help sales close more deals, powerful AI chatbots and a knowledge base to help service teams scale, and it's built to deliver results and revenue faster to help your business grow. So dump the disconnected tools and the chaos that comes with them. Discover what HubSpot's all-on-one platform can do to streamline your business. Visit HubSpot.com to grow better today. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday, June 28th. I'm John Weigel here with Ben Berkeley, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Remots, the company behind the music video dream car, Bugatti, is entering the robo-taxi market. Robo-taxis have been the talk of the tech town among issues at companies like Waymo, but the race is still very much on. With giants like Amazon, Tesla, and Cruise in the industry, who will come out on top? We'll get to that in a bit, but first, let's give you the hits and headlines today in business and tech. Starting us off with our car theme today, Uber will give about 175 people in select U.S. and Canadian cities $1,000 to spend on Uber, public transit, and other modes of transit only if they give up their car for five weeks. Um, how does this read to you, Ben? Do you think this is a good promotion? Uh, you know, I guess, well, let's first off note that the $1,000 number wasn't conjured out of nowhere. Like that is the estimated monthly average cost for vehicle ownership in the U.S. Um, so what this is, is ultimately a PR stunt meant to highlight the high costs of personal car ownership. Um, but I'm kind of interested to see if it's going to backfire. Um, I think it's going to end up showing the high costs of taking an Uber, Um, like granted I live in the money vacuum that is Los Angeles. Um, but I live seven miles away from the Hollywood bowl and I was just looking as we were starting to record, um, I'd be spending $80 round trip to get there. Um, Mm -hmm. if you are on the move a lot over five weeks, that's going to add up really, really fast. Um, and I think you're going to be wanting your car. And it is, it's quite interesting because I would suspect that, uh, quote, select cities, they would pick places that maybe the Ubers aren't expensive, but it seems like they're kind of just diving in here. They got Los Angeles, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Miami, San Francisco, Toronto, and Vancouver all eligible. So especially that San Francisco note, this this might actually be tough. Five weeks of Uber, uh, you might actually spend $1,000. I, I guess I love their confidence uh, do. that really this is going to work. It. Um, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. it seems dangerous. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing an evil laugh, my evil laugh impression uh, when I see the numbers <laughs> from this in a few weeks. Okay. Next Amazon is trying to complete with Shein and Timu by launching a new store that allows us customers to buy directly from China. Speaking of Amazon, it became the fifth U S company to hit a $2 trillion valuation on Wednesday, joining Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. Okay, over to Google. Google Translate added 110 new languages, including Cantonese and Punjabi, with the help of its PALM2 language model. Can't believe I uh, got that acronym right on the first time. Okay, over to Walgreens. Walgreens will soon shutter a significant number of its 8.6 thousand store locations. What exactly that means is anybody's guess, but the about 25% of its stores that aren't profitable probably don't have the best situation right about now. And finally, NBC will have sportscaster Al Michaels, that's A-L, not A-I, Al Michaels host daily recaps on the Paris Olympics on Peacock, kind of. The network is using AI to recreate Al Michaels' voice and will generate his narration of the 10 minute recaps. I mean, a mouthful there, but we're seeing AI come into sports. It looks like. Yeah. And I, you know, I've, I've been listening to Al Michaels my whole life. Um, and I know I'm going to be watching the Olympics and then I'm going to stumble upon one of these recaps. And I'm so interested to see, am I going to be fooled into thinking it's really him for even a moment? Um, probably, uh, almost, almost certainly. Um, 
But I think even if it sounds right, I just, I don't know if this AI dupe stuff will ever feel right. You know, this is another attempt to normalize this thing that is not normal. Um, and that's just going to be a really long uphill climb to get people to feel like this is okay and comfortable. Yeah. Okay, on to the main story today. Today, it's all about the RoboTaxi craze. 2024 has already been an incredibly busy year for RoboTaxi makers, especially the already operational Waymo amid many of their issues across the board. So, Ben, how would you currently describe the RoboTaxi industry this year? Messy, uh, in one word. But uh, I think we'll look at it just kind of from the last time that we did any sort of check-in on this industry. Um, at that point, it was quite literally on fire. Um, that was back in February when a mob in San Francisco smashed up a Waymo car and then torched it, um, which uh, is either a, you know, a show of resistance um, from one of its biggest test markets or just like a really interesting sociological experiment that um, I guess did not favor Google. Um, but while that was happening, um, Waymo's biggest rival, which is at the time as GM's cruise, was basically dead. Um, they had a series of safety mishaps that ran them entirely off the road. Their executive team was wiped out. It was just about the biggest uh, cluster imaginable. Um, and then you even see something like Tesla at that point, like their robo taxi strategy was letting Tesla owners use their cars as a side hustle and like sending them out autonomously to pick up and drop off passengers. A lot has changed since then. And this week in particular was a really active week. Yeah, it, it seems that way. And, you know, the last time we did talk about Waymo, you know, the car was on fire in San Francisco and uh, no good. Uh, every time I hear about Waymo in the news, it's unfortunately some bad PR. Um, but now how is Waymo in particular doing right now and what are they looking to do? I'll also just picking up on that for a second with they're in a tough spot, this this industry in general, every there's 6 million, I think, uh, car accidents in the US every year. Those are not all headlines, obviously. Anytime there's even one tiny thing um, like running into a telephone pole, um, it's big news. Um, and so uh, they're already just at a big disadvantage um, from like a public perception standpoint. Um, but, and, and they should be safety is really important if you're going to put, uh, these cars out on the road though. But what Waymo just did this week is they opened up to everyone in San Francisco. It was previously a waitlisted, um, robo taxi service. Now you can just get the app and have your ghost car show up and whisk you away. Um, and that's its second, uh, full city where it's just like going at kind of it's 100 percent operational thing phoenix is the other um and so it is a really big moment for them and you know we can talk about other companies in the mix here we should just while we're on waymo say they are in the lead they're in the lead by miles um yeah and i guess i'm speaking figuratively um but also actual miles their cars have done 20 million miles worth of driving fully on their own. Um, so if anyone is going to make this uh, work and get people on board with uh, the robo taxis, Waymo has got to be that company. Um, other companies can benefit from it down the road, but uh, Waymo is the most important um, in this space by, again, by miles. Yeah. It seems that they have a very exciting start here as the first company of this ilk to just get out there and already have their cars a 100% full capacity doing it, have the app and everything. Uh, but for Cruise, for Amazon, for Tesla, um, we're seeing, obviously you, you explained before that GM is having some troubles with Cruise. Uh, Amazon's kind of just getting their feet wet with it. And you know we all know about Tesla, but can you talk to me about all those three companies and what the next steps would be for each of them, even though it seems like they're quite far behind where Waymo is. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we even have a new contender, which was announced this week, which we can get back to in a moment. But um, for Cruise this week alone, um, they hired a new executive team. Um, seems like a really uh, 
experienced crew um, they need to be. Uh, the company did also resume road tests this month. So there is, you know, it's not all hopeless there. GM did not just throw in the towel, even though it probably looked for a while like they should have. Um, so we'll see if they can get back in this race at all. Um, Amazon, uh, they purchased company Zooks about four years ago. That's like their big entry into the driverless car world. And they've started road testing in more cities. Um, they're kind of poised to launch in Vegas soon. So they're, they've been this really big wild card in this industry because um, we just haven't really seen them in the same way. They're also a very different looking vehicle. So really just kind of like paradigm shifting there. And we'll see if sure. that goes well. And then Tesla, um, they will apparently unveil a robo taxi of their own in a few short weeks um, in early August, which is increasingly feeling like a wild undertaking as uh, cyber truck problems are piling up for them. Yeah. Yeah. And all that happened with cyber, cyber trucks earlier this year. So um, not exactly uh, waiting for that one to come out anytime soon. But uh, this new company that you mentioned, uh, that I also mentioned up top, um, what are they all about? Yeah, so who we're talking about here is Remont. Uh, that is a Croatian automaker. Um, they are also a company that owns Bugatti. So they are very uh, good at making high-end vehicles. Um, they've announced their robo-taxi, which is called Vern. And it's really interesting. Um, it's a two-seater. Um, it's kind of got like... Just like by look, you're like, oh, are we in the future now? Uh, it's fully autonomous, which means, you know, no human overrides. There's no steering wheel. There's no pedals, no rear view mirrors. There's no windshield wipers. I don't really know how that one works, but that's another story. Um, and this is reportedly going to be um, on track for a 2026 launch in Zagreb. And then they have um, a bunch of other cities across Europe that they have deals with. And so that could be a... a you know, there, there are definitely other things going on in uh, China. There are a lot of companies trying to play in this space in, in uh, the U.S. This is kind of the big first thing that's going to try to take over Europe from a robo-taxi standpoint. And I mean, th that just goes to prove even more. Like, it's really exciting how all these companies have slightly different takes on this innovation. I think that's the coolest part. But it does push the envelope that um, Waymo is still way ahead uh, having their taxis on the road this early when this company Vern is talking about a 2026 launch in Croatia. Um, that is just pretty nuts. But it is also exciting to see uh, what the European edition of the robo taxi will be like. Yeah, I mean, I think that the thing that gets really interesting down the road, uh, theoretically, if this industry doesn't um, run into you know, more utility pulls, um, then I think you're going to see um, a split between um, a company like Waymo and um, Cruise, which are basing their systems on, they're kind of putting them into existing vehicles, mm -hmm. um, like they're partnered, the Waymo's partnered with Jaguar. And so these are Jaguar SUVs um, that have been outfitted with uh, this technology. What you're seeing from something uh, like Vern here, that's a built fully from the ground up like that they are building not only just the car but the full experience uh, is built very much purpose built to robo taxi world that may be ahead of us and you can see this just in the way that they're focused on the riding experience and trying to make it so um you know it feels like a premium uh mm -hmm. product versus a human driven taxi where you can control the temperature and lighting via app. Um, you can play your own music and movies. You can pipe in scents. Like they, I, they're like app preview screen just shows like someone selected mango. It's like, <laughs> I, I'd get in there. I'd, I'd get in that car for sure. <laughs> wow. All right, that'll do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a ton more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up with the hustle.co slash email, and we'll see you later. Hustle.